A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, it's tabletop time! And I'm Murray, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit special. I'm going to be painting some environmental effects, which sounds a bit boring. So more specifically, I'm going to be painting Boba Fett standing in the harsh Tatooine deserts. Hopefully that is more... So, all that's remaining is to get myself a printed model of Boba Fett and get to work. 3D printing is an amazing resource that artists have access to these days. However, we always want to go big, and the bigger we print, the more parts we need to print in. And one of the small drawbacks of 3D printing is enlarging and shrinking of pieces. And this can unfortunately mean some poor fits. One unfortunate casualty of the printing process was Boba's blaster, which naturally, in my clumsiness, broke off. So first I just have to, uh, fix that. Easy, Murray hands. Gently apply the glue. Ah, beautiful. Well done, Murray hands. I never doubted you. When building figures whose legs are in multiple pieces, I'll always make sure that firstly, they all fit together properly and that the balance feels right and they're flush on the ground. You don't want to end up with a model that's leaning too far forwards and is, looks like he's about to swan dive. So I attach one leg to the hips and then I'll jimmy the other leg into position. There we go. Those are the most important aspects done. Now it's just a matter of connecting everything else together. is assembled. Some of the more eagle-eyed of you might notice that his aerial is missing. Uh, this is another issue with uh, 3D printing. It's called human error. We accidentally printed the aerial too big and it's about the same size as his helmet. Whoops. So I'm going to be assembling and painting most of this model while we print a new one. I went for a fairly strong zenithal priming, allowing me to get a leg up on the really bright light from the Tatooine suns, while allowing some of the darker colours to hide in the recesses. You're recording and I just walked in on you. Hi. <laughs> God damn. But I am going to try a trick with this painting. I'm not going to use any of the color black. So our main focus is lighting. So we're going to establish some really strong, vibrant colors, really get that heat across. And as such, I start bashing out some really nice warm browns. Introducing some reds. Some cold blues just in the crevices to simulate shadows. and then build up all the hot yellows. Now, despite mostly painting Boba Fett white here, his undersuit is actually pretty much pitch black. And I've already stated that I'm not going to use black. I'll use a strong blue from the most sharp shading to give it a bit of that edge separation, that pop you try and get with your Space Marine armor panels. And then I'll use a little bit of stippling with a pale green to get my highlights in on the most raised edges. What I'm trying to do here is simulate light hitting material that will let some light through, but not too much. So that's why I'm going to have bits of red patches around the folds. Like when you see the sun shine through fabric, some of the color is there despite the dyed color of that fabric. For the green armor plates, I'm gonna start with almost a deep turquoise, an almost dinosaur green, and then I'll slowly build up the color, almost using the armor panels as a mixing palette. panels, we're going to keep a very deep colour as light can affect yellow quite strongly. The base colour for the red is going to be the same blue-green as the green armour, but naturally adding more and more red, highlighting with a more flesh colour, as his red isn't as strong now. But more specifically, we want it to contrast with his rather bright red leather pouches. The 
black metal of his blasters I'm going to treat very similarly to his undersuit but I'm painting it separately because I'm going to do a few different things. Most of the shading is going to be a dark blue but we're going to have a lot of the ground colours bouncing up onto it. And now I attach the aerial to his head which has been missing. I'm going to come back and neaten up his dark visor. I'm going to use as many dark blues and purples to really make it stand out. I'm going to gently dapple some chips and scrapes on his armor, focusing on where you would see the most wear and tear, but also staying true to some more realistic references taken from the show, particularly the big scratch running down his right eye and around the small crater on the other side of his helmet. The secret to this stage is that I've actually mixed quite a lot of yellow into this mixture. So even though it's subtle, your eye will recognize similarities between these highlights and the dusty sand on the base, hopefully further convincing you that this man is in fact standing in a desert. I'm going to add even more yellow and ivory to the mixture to create the white sigil on his shoulder. Time for the gold. Gold is particularly vivid and likes to reflect itself rather than its surroundings, or at least certainly more than regular metals do. I move back and forth around the entire model, adding and subtracting just little details until I'm completely happy with it. And then it's time to work on tying the base together. Onto the home stretch, just bringing up the base to a nice pale tan color, dusting off the boots. Nothing can go wrong now, but it did. I was approached by an anonymous man. He suggested that I use some light earth terrain effects. Optimistically, I accepted. I applied it slowly, hesitantly. Is this too much? I don't know. It seems to be going well. No, actually. This might be too much. Fear, panic, and the stages of regret begin to settle in. Why did I accept the offer of the suspicious man? We're starting to lose all the colors that I'd introduced into the ground, but it was too far gone. I had to commit either way. However, there was a small chance that I could bring this back. Unfortunately, I would have to keep going, apply it all over, get a strong coat, and then try and bring it back with glazes. I mix together a yellow glaze and softly apply it. Thankfully, it seems to work well, and I am heavily, heavily relieved. <laughs> a final dry brushing of ivory, selectively on the tallest rocks and on the boots to give that sandy, dusty texture. Now the question is, was all this just a happy accident or did I barely just avert disaster? Only dramatic reveal shots can tell us. Like a panther. Yes. Boba Fett is done, dusted, literally, and ready to do battle. We had suspense, drama, off-camera tears, all in the pursuit of making something that just is something from another world. And that's why we do this hobby, just create something just a little bit new and different. A massive shout out to our patrons. Without you, this sort of thing would not be possible. It is by your support that we are able to create things like this. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like this sort of approach to your miniatures and dioramas, let us know in the comments. What did you like? What didn't you like? What went wrong that I wasn't aware of? Painting this model has been a blast. I really enjoyed doing this, just sort of giving life and character to just a statue, some sort of figure or character that we all enjoy and love. Or maybe not, but what to do from here? Do you have any suggestions? Again, attack the comments and let me know because 
I'm just gonna sit here. It's the outro now. I'll just wait. You can type them. I'm reading them now. Go on. I'll wait.